the mint manufactures collector coins using sterling silver as well as sterling scraps left over from making other coins. The silver goes into a casting furnace at 1,150 degrees Celsius. The melted silver is cast into a continuous bar about 4 centimeters high by 12 centimeters wide. A machine cuts the continuous bar into individual bars about 80 centimeters long. Each bar goes into what's called the roughing mill. The mill's two rollers squash the bar flat, using up to 8.6 metric tons of force. It takes up to a dozen passes to flatten the bar into a strip just 12 millimeters thick. A machine called the finishing mill thins the strip out even more to what will be the final thickness of the coin, anywhere from 0.7 millimeters to 4 millimeters, depending on the denomination. Next, the blanking machine stamps out blank coins. The silver that's left over, called sisal, goes back into the casting furnace where it's melted down into fresh bars of silver. The next stop for the blanks is the rimming machine, whose spinning wheel presses a raised edge or rim on each one. The blanks then go into a tub filled with water, cleaning solutions and steel beads. The beads act as an abrasive agent, smoothing and polishing the blanks. After a 20-minute cycle, they empty the tub's contents into a sifter to separate the blanks from the beads. Workers then towel dry the blanks by hand. This ensures there'll be no water stains on the coins. Throughout the coin making process, as the silver is worked, it becomes brittle. So brittle that it could easily break when struck. That's why at several stages, the metal goes through an oven called an annealing furnace. The coin design comprises artwork or a photograph or a combination of both. This coin will feature a photograph of Queen Elizabeth provided by Buckingham Palace. The artist uses a computer program to design a collage of various elements. Once the final design is approved by Mint officials, the process of engraving can begin. They take a plaster disc that's 27 centimeters in diameter. The computer guides the engraving machine to turn the one-dimensional computer design into a three-dimensional version in rough detail. This creates a plaster model of the design in the negative. They now use this negative to cast a plaster positive. An artist then enhances the detail by hand. Once that's done, they cast a negative plaster mold. From that, they then cast a positive mold, this time in rubber. From the rubber, they cast a negative mold out of hard black epoxy. They mount the epoxy model on a machine called a pentagraph, which is essentially a reducing machine. It traces the model and cuts a version one and a half times smaller in brass. This reduction process takes 36 hours. Then an engraver takes the brass model and fine tunes the design under a microscope. At this stage, the engraver also adds the lettering, noting the year, the denomination and the country of issue. Then comes another 36 hour reduction process. They reduce this brass model one and a half times to create what's called a matrix, a negative model made of high grade steel that's the final size of the coin. Then they strike the matrix onto a block of steel which creates a positive called a punch. Then they strike the punch onto another steel block to create a negative called a die. The coins are made one at a time in the coin press. There are two dies per coin, one for each side, positioned above and below the blank. They strike simultaneously, not once, but twice, to create a high-quality impression. Not at all like circulation coins, which are struck just once on high-speed machines that make several hundred coins per minute. 